So now the car's back home in the garage, and now I need to start tearing down. I need to get the charger, battery, and all those electronics off so that I can get to the motor and take off the motor. So I'm only 15 minutes in, and I've got the charger off to the side, and thanks to the Velcro mounting, all of these just peeled off and went off to the side super easily. So this is quite nice how easy this is to disassemble so far. Glad I designed it this way. And another 10-15 minutes later, all the batteries out. Now I just gotta take out the four screws to get this whole tray out. Now down to the motor. I need to take out this battery box support and that motor mount down there at the front of the motor. So now I'm all the way down to the motor in less than an hour which is pretty good. It's very workable. I know most gas cars that are modern these days can take two to three times that just to get to the starter. I think the part making it easiest was all the wiring just peeled away. I really didn't have to disconnect anything other than a couple of high voltage leads. Uh, everything else is just all harnessed together. Here on the side of the motor below the A2 you can see something either got really hot and melted this or got thrown out the side. And here's all that debris. So I'm going to open this up and hopefully get a look at what's going on. Okay, here's how this band came off with the A2 on top. You can see that was the place I just pointed at on the side. Top left is clean. But that's also scorched. And that's especially scorched. You can see all of that got hot. So three quarters of the motor got hot. I guess even that got hot. And I came and looked at this side. This brush was how it looked. This brush, actually this clip was like all the way up and the magnet part of here was like sticking a full inch out. So that's definitely not right. This side here, there's no brushes at all. They're just dangling. Pull them out there. Yeah, that is destruction. One brush scraping, the other one's just completely gone. So that is like the gas equivalent of eating a valve, losing a cylinder. I don't know, without that, that's why the motors had no power, because it couldn't get the right magnetic field timing to spin itself. And down here there's another I mean, this brush just fell out once I took the cage off. This is, let's see what the other side. Then the lower side on the other side, it's hard to see there, but that one on the right is disconnected or broken. The one on the left looks okay. So honestly, I don't know what happened here. It's like over half of the brushes broke free. I don't know if it was an overheating thing. My motor temp sensor, which is here, maybe in hindsight I should have put it up here closer to the brushes, but this only got up to the upper 40s and I think this should be able to handle 60C. Um, I wasn't overcurrenting it, I was only giving it 200 amps or so and I think this can take three to 400. I am at 140, 144 volts. This says 120, but I've seen lots of data sheets for this part number saying that you can run it at 144 volts. So I honestly don't know what happened here. I'm going to get it out of the car now. I think I just need to take all of these bolts out and I can get the adapter out, lift it out, see if this is rebuildable. Or honestly, if anyone has any leads for another replacement motor like this, be quite easy just to drop a new one in. I think these are pretty cheap. Or my other thought is I could take this as an opportunity to switch to AC, get a smaller, more compact, more efficient motor, lighter. So swap out the motor and controller. Controller's still good. Uh, then I would also have regen braking. So I guess open to ideas if anybody else has any other ideas of what I should do.
This is a 144 volt system, so I know right away people are going to say, get a Tesla motor, get a Nissan Leaf motor. Those run on 400 volts. I don't want to have to change my charger, my battery, my DC-DC converter. I just want to stick with something that can handle the 144 volt architecture that I have. So if you got suggestions or ideas, let me know in the comments. So to lift the motor out, I had to take the hood off. And I bought this $40 chain style lift I did a pull up on there I weigh 170 pounds this motor only weighs 140 so it can lift it and so now I'm just getting tension off of it from the transmission which I have slightly jacked up with this jack here underneath and I had to take the controller out and peel it over because the shaft was starting to run underneath and I need to needed to slide it so, we'll see if this comes out. There is an eye bolt here to lift it, but that's such off at an angle that I would need to slide it out anyways this way. So I'll thread an eye bolt in later. It's part way up, and I'm basically out of stroke here. And now I'm realizing that I should have shortened these ratchet straps another foot or so. Because if I get it up another foot, I can drive the car under in a way and then lower it all the way to the ground. Also in hindsight, I probably should have done this with the car backed in, that way I could have lifted the motor up and just backed in. Except now, I have to back out about four feet and I can't back out that far because I'll hit the wall. So I moved the bench and with like a foot to spare, I was able to back it up and now I'm able to drop it. So here's the coupler on the transmission. Just slides right off that side spline to go on the transmission shaft. And honestly, this whole part here sticks out and is not needed. So I could cut that and end up with an inch shorter coupling, uh, which would maybe allow a longer motor potentially. And this end on the motor is a bit odd. You can see the keyway, the key is shaped like a T because the motor key is bigger than this key. So I guess that's how it's been adapted. Overall, this is kind of huge and I don't really know if this, if this outer clamp piece is necessary. It might be able to be eliminated also. And here I'm pretty sure they uh, welded the clutch pressure plate onto here to get that spline. The clutch throwout bearing, uh, I think that mounted the fork there. That's all not here anymore. And I believe the clutch came through here and that's sealed off. So if I wanted to go with an AC motor, adding a clutch would be a little difficult because I'd have to buy all those parts. And another thing I'm noticing is there is a little bit of up down play and the transmission if anyone knows please let me know if that's normal or if this is something that I should address now and change that bearing while I'm here and here at the motor this is super thick aluminum adapter plate and you can see how far back that shaft is actually set there's also kind of this box structure to give additional length so with Cutting down that input shaft, this whole thing might be able to be shrunk. Maybe get rid of this whole box. Several inches could be gained over here. But now I'm going to take all this off just so it's lighter and easier to work with. And here's the box spacer plate. It's just got four bolts in, one in each corner that mounts to the motor itself. And then there's this shaft collar clamp on here. I'm not sure what that does. Maybe that just locates the coupling so it doesn't go too far or not engage this enough. I'm not sure. And someone's also definitely tried to mount something on here before because this is a sheared bolt in the threaded hole there. This is what one of the brushes looked like that I mentioned earlier that it had popped out and the spring wasn't latching onto it but it does go back into place. 
this one's spring is just completely gone. Okay, I think I just found the root cause. This here's the commutator, I'm pretty sure. And this part of it, right by my finger, one of these strips has lifted. Let's see if I can get it to rotate. So because it picked up, it then was scraping and cleaving all the brushes and left a path of destruction. So I've never worked on a brush DC motor before. I'm sure some of you watching have. I could really use your input. Uh, do you guys think this is repairable or worth repairing if all the holders and brushes are destroyed, a bunch of the springs are gone, and the commutator will need repair? And then you can see some also some serious heat started to get like melt the casing a little bit there. I mean, this thing might be totally toast. I don't know. You guys, let me know. Okay, there's a much better look at that commutator piece. You can see it's deformed and lifted up. And then all the scraping that's occurred. And then on this part, with all these fan blades, I don't know if it is a fan, but those are pretty scraped up too from destroying all the brush holders. And honestly, that might have been deformed for a while. I don't know if it's quite this deformed. But I know there was a ticking as the motor spun for the whole time I've had the car, and I assumed it was just a worn brush clicking or something, and I'd get to it eventually. But I, I think that's what that was, is that was ticking on one specific spot as it was spinning, and then it must have got really hot on that highway run and lifted. Maybe it was due to a bad connection on the brush or something, lifted and then just destroyed everything in its path. So it wasn't an over voltage, over current problem. I think it was just a bad connection problem or a worn out motor that was, I mean, clearly it was giving me warning signs to begin with, with that ticking. I know some of you told me to investigate that, but I was like, I'll get there when I get there. And yeah, I made a mistake. I went for the minimum viable product, just wanted to get it out in the road and see what would happen, what its limits were and reach the limit of the motor right away. Didn't even reach the limit of the car. So that's one option is repair this. Another option is get another one of the replacement one of these. A third option is I think a Warp 9 series DC motor would drop in pretty easily. And then beyond that, that would be going on to option four would be getting an AC system. So I already have, this is 144 volt architecture. So something like an AC 35 or an AC 50 motor won't work because those are 120 volt. A Hyper 9 would fit. I would also need a new controller. An ME 1616 would definitely fit. That would only come out to about here. Then I could have tons of space to run the liquid cooling required for that motor. Um, an AC, I would, it would be much lighter and I would have regen braking which would be better braking performance and more range overall. It would just be a better car overall. So I'm kind of in a pickle here. I might take this to a motor repair shop, see if they, what they think it would cost to fix. Pretty sure I could find a replacement one of these for 500. I could probably find a Warp 9 for 800 to 1000. And then going the AC route, the ME1616 or the Hyper 9s are expensive. Hyper 9s is going to be like 3000 plus for a matched controller motor pair. But an ME 1616 with a Kelly controller, that could be about 2000 and maybe I could sell this and get 1500 uh, not 1500 get like $500 for this. So give your input in the comments what you guys think I should do. I'm definitely not giving up. This car is definitely going to be back on the road and ripping. Um, just not really sure what to do right now with this dilemma. And if any of you watching have a lead on a cheap motor that will work with this 144 volt system, let me know. I'm in Utah, definitely in the market to buy a motor.